My name is Lou Van Wombeck. I am the seventh and eighth grade science teacher. I'm also the eighth grade team leader. I have one middle school student in sixth grade and one lower school student in fourth grade. I'm Kate Junkins. I teach fifth and sixth grade science, and I'm also the science department head um, in the middle school. I also am a key school parent. I have two um, children here at key school, um, one in kindergarten and one in fifth grade. So I am going to share with you first um, a general overview of our science curriculum here in the middle school. And then um, I'll speak to you about our fifth and sixth grade curriculum specifically, and then hand it over to Lou, who will speak to you um, about seventh and eighth grade science. So in our middle school science department, we really um, highlight and support um, what you see kind of bolded and underlined there, that innate curiosity that children um, bring with them uh, to school in their daily lives. So our goal is to really support that mission of key school is to, um, you know, fan the flames of their, of their curiosity, of their, of their want to learn and discover and create. So on the left of the screen, you can see um, that those are sort of our, um, our skills, our practices that we really embed in each of our units of study throughout middle school in fifth through eighth grade. And on the right, um, those are some of the ways that we uh, support and develop those skills in our students. So our framework is those are those next generation um, science standards, um, but really that's just a guide, right? We, um, we, we look at those to build our curriculum and um, we have the creativity and flexibility to really use the um, best practices that are, that are founded in solid research that are appropriate for um, kids at the middle school level. Specifically um, in fifth and sixth grade science, uh, we focus on a general science curriculum. And by general science, we mean that um, we expose children and give them experiences in a variety of different science fields and branches of science. Um, in fifth grade, you can see our units of study. Um, we start by learning about arthropods um, and move through um, the rest of our units and end our school year um, talking about solar energy. I really want to highlight, though, the pictures that I've included to give you a visual of how we study science in each of those areas and how we um, build upon the students' natural curiosity, right, and give them that experiential um, investigative approach to learning. Um, so we are all about students thinking like scientists. We want them to not only learn the science, but deeply understand the science. Um, and most importantly, experience the science. So put their hands on it and work like scientists each and every day. Um, we give them a variety of laboratories to work in too. So not only are we learning science in our classroom laboratories, but we're learning um, and having students experience science um, outside of the four walls of our classroom. So around campus, um, in our neighborhood in Hillsmere, we use Quiet Waters Park to do some learning. We use Hillsmere Beach um, to have students experience the world around them. And we also um, you know, incorporate and infuse our science learning in our outdoor education trips. So um, science are really, or scientists, our students are really experiencing science every single day um, and really getting a closer look at observing the world around them. Um, you can see from some of the pictures um, that we do a lot of um, exploring, right? So this is our sixth grade um, science curriculum. You can see the units of study on the left hand side of your screen. Again, um, starting with watersheds and working our way through um, to the end of our year with our consumer science um, project. So um, in our watersheds unit, that's a nice connection to our outdoor education curriculum. Um, the students travel to North Bay. Um, you can see some of the pictures where they're mucking around in the water and uh, collecting some samples. They do some seining. They really um, literally get their hands um, onto science. We're building models. There's a picture of a watershed model. You see some students with a scale. Um, that's during our density unit, which is really designed to be an exploratory unit 
um, they, they figure out what mass volume and density is um, instead of us just telling them what it is. Um, so there's a lot that happens um, in fifth and sixth grade science. They put on a lot of different uh, type of scientist hats um, and work uh, very closely with the science um, and a lot collecting data, analyzing data, asking their own questions, finding their own answers and drawing their own conclusions. Um, and I'll pass it over to Lou so he can tell you more about the seventh and eighth grade mm -hmm. curriculum. Thanks, Kate. Uh, good morning, everybody. A uh, quick story. This is my third year here at Key School, and uh, but prior to that, I worked in other schools, mostly in high schools, and uh, mostly as an administrator recently. And I, I would see a lot of these lab reports from the Key School Middle School from other parents when I, especially when I was a high school principal, and people would show me like, look at this cool lab report that they do down at Key School. So this. Um, was always on my mind for many years in terms of seeing this. And when I walked into what you see behind me, which is my wet lab at, for life science, which is this seventh grade curriculum um, to apply for a position to work here, <laughs> to be honest with you, I, uh, I was blown away because this to me looked like a college laboratory. And uh, you can see in the picture there, there's also a greenhouse on campus and the uh, facilities here are phenomenal. So I'm sorry that you can only see them in my background, but we make great use of them. Uh, we are up and about like um, the video showed and Ms. Junkins mentioned, we are very investigate, investigative, inquiry-based. Students are always active in thinking and challenged to think and analyze data. These are some of the main units we do. We start off with a, a microscope unit. I added a new wild sourdough with actually cat, capture wild microbes while making a sourdough starter, which went off really well uh, this year. Uh, we have tons of microscopes. We do a big unit there. Uh, most of the year is done through experimental design where the students are designing various experiments and they get a lot of flexibility in that because they have, you know, different interests and thoughts. One of the big ones is the bean plants, which is in that top picture there. Uh, and then we go in for most of the year into the human anatomy and human systems, which as you can imagine for seventh graders is a very interesting topic. They want to learn about themselves and how they tick and what they do. Uh, that takes up a good part of the year. A part of that we've uh, added a really intense and uh, wonderful session on the brain and learning and allowing them to sort of be metacognitive and, and kind of view themselves as learners, um, which is really kind of neat. And we tag team that with our life skills program and Ms. Judd will come in and talk to them about the brain and learning. We'll do some mindfulness components of learning. There's an addiction component where we talk about the brain as well. So there's a lot of great connections, especially developmentally with seventh graders. It's, it's a really nice unit. And then a pulse rate lab experiment, which again, they have a lot of flexibility on how they conduct that and analyze data. And the picture to the bottom right of the students in the marsh there is taken down at Point Lookout, which is in Southern Maryland. And that, um, now those students are probably a lot taller than that now. They're in ninth grade now. Uh, but uh, that ecosystem study is done at Point Lookout. And that is a, uh, a four day intense sort of uh, all-encompassing scientific project that the seventh grade class does. Um, and I'll talk more about that later when we talk about the outdoor program because we really do a wonderful job of syncing outdoor education with science education and other uh, facets of the curriculum in the middle school. And I'm also the eighth grade uh, team leader um, and I teach earth science, uh, one section of earth science in the eighth grade. Uh, and you can see the units there. Uh, some of the differences as you get into eighth grade, we expect a little more of um, a little more sophisticated experimental design, uh, data analysis. They, they're taking uh, algebra at that point. So their math abilities um, are a little bit better. So they're graphing and able to do some things there. We take advantage of that and kind of try to reinforce that as well. We go, we do a, a very detailed chemistry experiment and this copper sulfate lab is one of those labs that I would see all the time. You can see that top picture of the students they're wearing their safety goggles as they should, right? And you can see the test tubes uh, there uh, with the copper sulfate solution and various uh, results. Um, uh, is it just a wonderful chemistry reaction lab uh, for eighth graders to show and uh, they do a complete analysis of that. And I always think like once you've had that frame of reference of what a chemical reaction is and you can sort of 
uh, get a visual on that um, because it's a very abstract concept just in a textbook. But to have them do experiments related to that in eighth grade, I think serves them well in all facets of science as they move on. Uh, minerals and rocks are part of that. And then we do a, a huge weathering lab where they uh, design their own experiments uh, based on uh, what they think uh, the rates of weathering. And that lab is actually fairly sophisticated and uh, calls for a detailed data analysis and graphing and um, presentation of that data. Uh, Earth's interior and plate tectonics and the earthquakes and volcanoes lab we take advantage of. You can see a, a hole made in this one picture in the bottom with the purple marker. Students were challenged at home in the spring to make uh, their own seismograph. And that's that's example of one, a working one, um, I should say, and it moves. Uh, um, and then we end with stars in space. So uh, we do a lot with the STEM, especially when it comes to earthquakes. There's a shake table. They try to make buildings that stand up uh, under different conditions. Uh, it's a wonderful unit, especially as they start to end their eighth grade science year. And that other picture, the three students looking off, is our trip to Old Rag, which is one of the uh, largest trips in the eighth grade. The, uh, it's done usually in the fall there. Uh, as you can see, we had a beautiful day on that trip. That was last year. And we tie that into some of a lot of the, the rocks, of course, and uh, the geology of the region, as well as maps. Uh, so that's always one of the eighth grade highlights of the year. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our wonderful math department who will uh, describe our math curriculum.